want to welcome you out to a somatus. I'm John. I am Jason. And uh, so today we're going to get into a really interesting topic. Yes. Uh, it should be a fun one. I, I've been looking forward to this uh, episode for a long time, and we are actually going to talk about magic. Magic, abracadabra. And uh, so you might say, well, you know, up to this point, we've talked a lot about sound. We've talked about waves. We've talked about, um, you know, those types of things. So how does magic have, you know, how do we put all of this together? And and I think that um, they actually go really well together. Yep. I think they have a lot to do with each other. So, um, well, why don't we start with what is the history of magic? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I'm sure there's a lot we don't even know or maybe will never know about that. Um, When I think of magic, obviously, unfortunately in this day and age, you know, it's like a certain media entertainment group basically has based their entire career existence, whatever you want to say, off of magic. And that's kind of what I understand about it, but let's hear about you. Well, when I think of what is what are the origins of magic and what they are, I guess we all begin with, you know, in ancient times, maybe in Egypt or maybe, you know, King Arthur's court where Merlin was there and you had this magician or you had the, the Egyptian... Uh, the uh, Egyptian priests that served Pharaoh and they would do, you know, incantation and they would do different things um, and they would produce magic for the, for the Pharaoh. Um, I, I don't know if the idea of Merlin is anything different than that. Uh, I think that maybe with Egyptians, you have a bit more, an idea that maybe they were performing tricks, not real magic, where Merlin is more of a true magic, you know, where he was, you know, conjuring things up. Yeah. And uh, so I think when we look at the history of magic, those are two strong examples of what maybe the mainstream idea would be of what it is. Uh, What do you think? Well... Uh, going back probably even further than that, you would think of ancient civilizations and rituals, mm-hmm. maybe to bring upon a certain occurrence. You know, if they feel like there's a drought for the past however many seasons and they want to bring about rain, you know, whatever. And so they think what's going to appease the gods? What do we need to do to bring about this occurrence? And so... Maybe it was human sacrifice, or maybe it was certain dances and songs, movement and words. And so that energy that they release, they're hoping to bring about rain. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, really, it probably comes down to mindset, like we've discussed earlier, and, Mm -hmm. you know, the emotions that they're trying to inflict in people, their subjects, their their citizens, whatever you want to say. And so what did they do to try to remedy some of their problems? Yeah. So I, I think what you were talking about is maybe going back to like Stonehenge and the Druids, or maybe even in the Americas where they had, um, all type of ritual. I mean, cause in the Americas, they even had like human sacrifice at pyramids at, at eclipses. Mm -hmm. And those were all meant to, you know, make sure that the it rained and the crops grew and right. that they were prosperous. Mm-hmm. Um, all of this, you know, let's face it, you can't talk about magic and not talk about religion and kind of the same yeah. thing. Because it's really the, it is, they're, they're the same, they're the two sides of the same coin. Yep. And so... Let's get, and again, I, before we get into this, I don't want to make it sound like we are anti-religion or something like that. That's not the purpose of what we're doing here. We're having a strictly a, 
um, straight up philosophical conversation of what these things are. Try to better understand, you know. We're not critiquing belief here or we are not critiquing, you know, right, wrong, anything like that. We are simply saying, hey, these are the connections. Does that make sense? Right. We can say human sacrifice is probably wrong, but. <laughs> well, I don't, again. You know, that's in their context back then. That's what yeah, they believe. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I could say that human sacrifice was wrong because, again, that is me putting a judgment. Right. On, number one, something that has nothing to do with me. For right. Number one, because that was distant past. Number mm-hmm. two, um, you know, who am I to judge? They, they lived their lives and. You know, because I think that, again, when we look at something like human sacrifice, we put our own uh, interpretation on those things. Whereas, uh, and again, I'm probably going too much on this, uh, off on a tangent like this, but a lot of people don't understand that people volunteered to be sacrificed. Not all of them. Yeah, there were, you know, obviously people were taken in war, people were taken captive captive and they were sacrificed but there were also plenty of people who volunteered to be sacrificed because it was a great honor to be sacrificed and they were uh, you know taken care of and their families were taken care of and that year leading up to their sacrifice you know because it was a yearly thing they would choose the person that was to be sacrificed and then for an entire year they would be taken care of and treated given, like royalty yeah they would be given everything they they wanted interesting and uh and being sacrificed really wasn't all that bad because they were usually drugged out of their minds so they had no idea what was going on so hmm. not that all of them were i'm sure there were plenty that were horrific right uh but not a lot of them they were drugged out of their minds so they had no idea what was going on hmm. i've gone way off topic <laughs> So that was a good one. Let's get one. let's get back to uh, magic, uh, but so we were talking about the history of magic. We were talking about um, you know how we cannot separate religion from magic. Religion and magic are the same thing. So we kind of had this discussion about the two different ways of looking at this, and. You know, let's take the figure of the figure of Merlin. Merlin was a magician in the court of King Arthur, and he supposedly could, you know, conjure things and do magic and, you know, perform miracles, basically. I don't know if anybody today would say that Merlin was a historical figure that truly could, you know, do the things that the books say that he could do, the books or the movies. Uh, but now let's take that on the other side of that coin. Whereas if you were to go to most Christians and you were to say, okay, well, did, was there a person that was born of a virgin who grew up, performed miracles, raised the dead, healed the sick, fed people, you know, with no food, walked on water, walked on water. Um, Water into wine. Yeah, and said he was the son of God, was crucified, and then was reborn. Uh, Not many Christians would say, oh, no, that really didn't happen. Most Christians would say, no, that that truly happened. There was a person that did all this in reality. You know, that's the basis of their faith. So, you know, what is the difference between those two? I guess it's just uh, obviously more mainstream accepted the Christianity aspect mm-hmm. and exactly you know with Arth- with Arthurian legends and Arthur yeah I guess there's suggestions that those people never really existed and they what were born kind of after the fall of Rome or at least their their legend was kind of created after the fall of Rome yeah. when there was a lot of a huge power vacuum and a lot of people who could speculate and, you know, Mm -hmm. come up with stories and whatever. And so you think about that. And then you also think about on the opposite side of the world, where it's like Tai Chi masters Mm -hmm. or Buddhist monks and stories, or I've heard stories, rumors, whatever, that they can levitate themselves in the air. You know, Mm -hmm. that's, that's 
magic, and that's religion-based exactly. magic. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things that we are trying to understand and see what we can do. Exactly. So, so I'm going to propose a little bit of a. This is where where we're going to take the deep dive. Nice. And I'm going to put something out there. I'm going to say, so if we, if there are a large number of people out there and, and we used Christianity as an example, but you could go to, you know, multiple different religions throughout the world. And they basically have this belief in miracles and they have this belief in, you know, magic for lack of a better word. They, they wouldn't call it magic. They would call it miracles, faith, blessings, whatever they want to call it. But, You know, that Arthurian legend of Merlin Mm -hmm. and what any religious figure did is basically the same thing. Um, And I am going, this is where we're going to take the deep dive because I'm going to propose, I'm going to put the question out there that they're not wrong. That magic is something that is real. Magic is something that can happen. Uh, the main reason why we don't see it today is because we don't know how to do it. Mm. We've lost that knowledge that maybe our ancient ancestors, where they were much more in tune with their environment, they were much right. more in tune with the you know nature and everything. Maybe they discovered knowledge that has been lost to us. Maybe that... Maybe they knew things that we don't know. Maybe we're the dummies and they were the smart ones. Well, and I think it really does come back to what you said about our disconnect from nature, Mm -hmm. from the natural world, because we've talked about how mathematics is everything. Mm -hmm. And that's energy, you know, light energy, sound energy. That's that's what we are. And so when you think about the fact that everything is mathematics, everything in nature is. And so magic, you know, I mean, think about potions or alchemy, probably back in Merlin's day, Mm -hmm. alchemy, where you're mixing certain potions, you know, certain ingredients to make a certain potion to bring about a certain outcome, you know, whatever. I don't know much about Mm -hmm. that at all, but there's specific ratios Mm -hmm. of ingredients used, you know, same with music, it's ratios. You have a certain length of a string, Mm-hmm. that when it's plucked, you know, at a certain tightness, you know, it's plucked yeah. and it produces a sound. Yeah. And then you shorten that string and it produces a, another sound. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, everything is very mathematically set out and we've already kind of brushed upon that. And, but we'll always have to come back to it because it is a foundation. And so when it comes to magic, it's just people who were more in tune with nature, more in tune with the natural world around them, able to manipulate their environment, mm-hmm. bring together energies and bring together, you know, ingredients, if you will, yeah. and produce an outcome. Exactly. And I think that because they were just so much more in touch with the natural, we've kind of lost the natural man yeah. in our day and age. And I think that's one of the the cancers that kind of plagues us is yeah. that we we are so disconnected from nature. Like even like you think, okay, who are the people that are in touch with nature? And you think of hippies and those types of people. Even they are nowhere near no nearly connected with their environment as our ancient ancestors. Right. And there's still people like that yeah. living today in other areas of the world. There, there probably are, um, but they're, their, their numbers are very small. Right. Um, maybe if you go to India or you go to, you know, those types of places where technology hasn't taken over every aspect of modern life. The rainforest, Brazil, yeah, Congo, rain, Africa. Rain, you know, those, those indigenous tribes. Yep. Um, those are the types of people that maybe still have some of this knowledge. I think that the main difference is, is that in the, past that was the norm is that there were a lot of people like that and there was a lot of uh communication there was a lot of interaction there Mm -hmm. was a lot of that information and that knowledge being passed about 
Now, was it was probably being passed very slow because something from China took a long time to get to Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that knowledge and that, you know, that knowledge was something that was actively being um, investigated all the time. I'm sure that those Practiced. people knew what every single plant and species in in their area were. Right. You know, and they knew, oh, well, this, if you put this and this and this together, it had this practical um, outcome. Yep. And we can use it for this, this, and this. And that came from trial and error. And not to say that everything that they thought was beneficial was. Right. They were probably wrong on some things. But um, that that was that type of deep, connective relationship that they had with nature and their environments. Yeah. And I, nowadays, it seems like what we have is pseudo magic. I mean, yeah. Here we are, we're talking into a microphone that we can hear exactly. ourselves through these headphones. It's being recorded onto a little teeny little teeny SD card. SD card that we can put into a computer that we can upload to the internet that anybody on earth can mm -hmm. hear and see what we have to do today. And exactly. you can pick up your phone and you can get whatever information you want. You can send it across the world real quick. And so that's like pseudo magic. And I think what it is, it's it's magic in a way because I don't even understand how it operates and how it really works and I don't think most people do mm -hmm. but what it's really doing is it's almost diminishing the natural magic within yeah. us and yeah. around us because we're so locked in and focused on this mm -hmm. device you know or well, I agree it's, so. it's artificial and, right and it's made life artificial mm -hmm. that's why we we have so much pain and suffering and and all of that in the world today is because we don't know who we are. Right. We have no identity people. That's what the up, uh, you know, that's what, why people march and people say this and people say that. And it's because they have no identity and they're desperately searching for that. So it's like groups of identities, you know, mm -hmm. instead of like your individual identity, yeah. you want to fit into a group, you know, you exactly. and which, I mean, that has a lot to do with human nature. You want to fit into a community, exactly. but it's like, so, there's too many little communities that yeah. people are trying to fit into. So it just disconnects us and it yeah. divides us. And you know, I don't like to talk about division, but you know. Well, it's a big part of our world today. It is. is, is uh, division is probably a bigger part of our world today than unity. Unfortunately, and, uh, yeah. Because I, I think that, and again, we're, we're kind of getting off on tangents, but the, the problem with the world today is that nobody can see their place. Mm. Like, and, and it comes from technology and it comes right. from like people in ancient times had no, like they would look at us today and they would just scratch their heads and they would be like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yep. There's a social disease uh, <laughs> with your, your, your com entire society is one big joke. Right. Because you are so lost in things that are not real unimportant unimportant things that are semantics but yet this is what is your driving force and uh it's you know obviously we're paying the price and i unfortunately believe we will continue to play pay a great price for this lack of connectivity with nature and this loss of identity but also that's kind of what we're doing here is I, I think that we've progressed to where we need to find new ideas and new ways of talking about things, but to also be true to what we are. You know? Right. Because a lot of times people say, oh yeah, we, we need new ways and new things and new this, but they're not, they're not truthful and they're not right. And they basically just want to destroy the old and install the new when they really what they don't understand is they're just following a cycle. There's nothing new that they're giving. It's just recycled. They think they're unique. They think they're new, but they're not. Well, it's like clothing and fashion trends. I exactly. mean, basically what it seems like nowadays is like the nineties exactly. is coming back. And exactly. when it comes to the way I think fashion, and this has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but it's just like trends of society. Yeah. I feel like 
you know, Hollywood and the music industry, yeah. they have shaped our culture over the last, what, you know, 100 yeah. plus years, probably more exactly. with movies. And we're going to get into an episode later about music and soundtracks of movies and cinema, all that. But I feel like what's happened is they've used a form of magic mm-hmm. in, you know, a lot of the things they do in these movies and the music they put into it. To manipulate us and to direct us into a certain way, like the way that they perceive and the way that they've portrayed like romance and relationships, you know, if you act like that, that you see in the movies, like that's not how you find a partner. You know, a lot of the ways that they portray love in movies Mm -hmm. is absolutely incorrect. Yeah. It's completely backwards. Again, once again, it's artificial. Right. It's not. You know, and I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think that love and relationships, there are many different phases. But the problem is, is that relationships take a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And relationships are not, you know, hopefully there's love there. Hopefully there's attraction. That's an important part. But as time goes on, those things they, they stay part of a relationship, but a relationship needs to grow. Oh, definitely. And uh, this is one of the, the great lies of our society um, that has come out. And again, we're getting way, way off topic. But one of the great lies in our society is that men and women don't need each other. <laughs> I know, right? Th- this is one of the greatest, most idiotic stupidities that mankind has ever come up with. Like species needs to yes. continue. I mean, it's a natural order of things. Well, but. Uh, and, 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 and yes, there's the, you know, we need to keep the species going, but I think that it goes on into a much deeper level than that. And it's that a man has certain attributes and he's good at certain things, and but he's really bad at others. Women are the same way. They're really good at certain things, but they're not good at others and other things. And you put a man and a woman together and it is going to be a fight. It's going to be a struggle because we are fundamentally different creatures. We are, we are not the same on the inside. Um, We have different emotions. We have different goals. We have different ways of seeing things, but When you put a man and a woman together and they truly work hard to become a couple, to become united, then you become, the woman and the man become a full person. That's where the magic is, right? Yes, that's where the magic is. That's where the true magic is. And And again, this is like, we're talking about stuff that's going to get us canceled before we even get going. That's cool. (laughs) That's cool because... Whatever. I don't care. We right. This this uh, this show is about truth, right? And you know, and it's our opinion. You can yeah. have yours. You don't have to watch it. Whatever you know. Yeah. You don't have to. They can cancel us. They can shut us. It doesn't change anything. No, it no. doesn't change this. Right. Again, what that's what Asomatis is about is it does. If you think you can control this world, then you're a fool. Right. You, you can th- control yourself. Yes, you can control yourself, and that's about it. Right. If yeah. you think you can control people, if you think you can control nature, speech, if yeah. you think you can control <laughs> nature, you are a fool. Yeah. You will, yeah. you know, that's what, wasn't that what Merlin was trying to do? Wasn't that what the Egyptians were trying to do? I mean, they were trying to control their environment. They were trying to control people. They were trying to do all of these things. Right. And in the end, who were they? Yeah. Well, and then again, that's like that's what takes you back to like uh, when we're talking about Buddhism yes. or like the Buddhist monks and the masters of Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. Those, from what I understand, I really don't know much, but it's like those people, they concentrate on mastering themselves. Yes. They concentrate on internal mastery, not external mastery, because really... Yeah. You know, it comes back to the saying, like, you can't love anyone unless you truly love yourself. Yes. And again, you know, like, I'm not sure where this is going, but it's all about the magic. You know, it's all about the fact that yeah. the magic is in with, with it, it's within all of us. It's inside all of us. And mm-hmm. so really, like we've talked about earlier, it's not necessarily something you have to go out and find. 
You know, it's not something that you have to search for externally. It's all about being able to focus your mind, focus your thoughts, focus your actions. You know, it's repetition daily. Mm -hmm. And when you apply certain things, magic happens. And, you know, your interpretation of what magic is could be different than mine, could be different than John's. Mm -hmm. And it's just all about being able to hone your energy be in control of your thoughts, your actions, you know, someone might do something that's going to upset you, offend you. Um, you know, how do you react? And that's really what is going to determine your character, determine who you are. Exactly. Because, and again, we, um, you know, we put it out there. What is magic? Right. What is it? Yeah. Um, when you look at the examples in the past, and what we would think it is today and religion, magic is about making your world the way you want it to be. Mm. Nice. Isn't, yeah. isn't that the basic, it's about making the world the way you want it to be, even though we don't know how to do it. That's what the whole magic thing is about. It's because we don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know how to make the world the way we want it to be. That's why we're, in 2021 and human beings have existed for hundreds of thousands of years yep. and we are still dealing with basically the same issues generation after generation generation after generation the the issues of man woman child happiness family community community we're, we're dealing with the, the problems of resources. We're dealing with the problems yep. of war, aggression, violence. Mm-hmm. We're dealing with, you know, all of these issues that have been eternal throughout the existence of man. And will always be. And will always be because yep. that is the purpose of why we're here. Yep. So what is magic? Magic is that elusive thing, that elusive way of making the world perfect in the way that you want it to be Mm -hmm. to and again it i don't want to call it lazy but it's also that idea of just making it happen quick fix yeah quick fix instant gratification whatever yes and no i i i can see that in it but you know because that's the wishing part you know right we wish we hope we we really really want this but um, but in the, on the other side of it, it is about not, there is on the magician side of it, there is somebody with knowledge that we don't have because they're able to do things that are amazing and that nobody else can do. So isn't that really what magic is about is it's about making the world the way we want it to be and having the knowledge even if that knowledge is a series of words or a series of motions and gestures right. that they can do something amazing and make something right and make something that, that lasts. Yep. I guess that that's a really interesting concept. I like it. And I mean, even getting back to some other, um, I guess, uh, s- examples, couldn't think of the word there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but like when it comes to music and religion and, and mm-hmm. maybe not even just religion, but just music in yeah. general, when you have the conductor up there and they're, they're waving their yeah. wand, basically, I mean, what is, what do they call that conductor's stick, you know, conductor's sure. wand, whatever. And sure. they're leading the, the congregation. Yeah. yeah. Either it's singing or it's the instruments being played. And so, exactly. you know, it's that motion mixed with the music, you know, mixed with the words that the people are exactly. saying. And that's what is. Uh, invoking these emotions inside of the congregation to feel a certain way. Exactly. You know, whatever their whatever their reason behind getting people to feel a certain way, whether it's, you know, collecting resources, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know. Anyways. Exactly. There's a lot of things with magic, you know, like you said, the movement well, and everything. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've, I don't know what you think about this, but I have a proposal. Um, we're trying really hard here at, somatist to um well we're trying hard to make our program you know a certain length we don't want them to go super long right what if you th- what do you think about 
Um, we've talked about a lot of stuff on this episode. What do you, I think that we could do a whole nother episode on this. I'm sure. So I'm sure we could. What if we, what if we go ahead and we stop this one and we do a part two? Yeah. Yeah. I Sound like good? it. Yep. Okay. Cause I don't, you know, some, we want people that are listening to this to be able to listen to it and not have to, uh, you know, ingest so much yeah, and process, so much analyze, in. of course. Yeah. So, uh, I we'll like go it. ahead and we'll end this, but we want a part two. Yep. We're going to do a part two right now. And uh, we will continue because this is obviously a fascinating subject. I knew it was going to be. Yeah, definitely. So I'm John. I'm Jason. And uh, catch part two of Magic here on Asomatus. Until next time. Until next time.